Welcome back to the shop and episode two of uh, tramming the CNC. As mentioned previously, I cut off the bar stock to fit the new smaller uh, dial indicator and drilled and tap it quarter 20 and then fasten it to it with a quarter 20 screw. Now, the other one, I still have this. This is for me to index the glass plate, get it flat to the router itself, not to the axis of the router, just flat to the router. So basically, if the router was perfectly perpendicular, I wouldn't have to do anything more, but the router isn't. So this gets it indexed to the router, and then I swing this around back and forth to get the, the index tilt, the router tilt, perpendicular to the glass. And then we go forward with spoil boards. Now, let, let, let me show you a quick demo of, of why I'm doing all this. Got a piece of MDF just laying here on the table saw. And um, if I just let the router run the way it is, it could be slightly tilted this way or slightly tilted this way or back or front. Now, in the overall scheme of things, if you're just doing linear cuts and cutting parts out and drilling holes, that doesn't make a lot of difference. But if you're doing a large piece that has some 3D, 3D to it and you have to clear off surfaces, if it's tilted a little bit, you're going to get what's called shingling. In other words, it's going to look like the clapboards of a house because it's going to cut deeper on one side of the cutter than on the other side of the cutter. So that's the whole purpose of this, is to get the router absolutely perpendicular to the work surface. Now, MDF, any kind of wood you're going to use for a uh, spoil board, has inconsistencies in the surface. It's not perfectly flat. That's why you take that large diameter cutter and you run a program that cleans that surface off completely and now you have a surface that's absolutely perpendicular to your router so you don't get any shingling. So that's what, that's what we're going for here. And with that, let's get busy. Okay, so the plate is on the, uh, on the platen for the CNC machine. I'm holding it in place with some double-sided tape and wood quarter-inch pieces of wood. I found the center of the piece of uh, glass. I've indexed the router head to the center of the piece of glass and indexes my zero point so I can get back to it if I need to uh, quickly. I've, the, uh, I've got the dial indicator in place and now I have to run this from corner to corner to corner to find the highest corner and then shim the other corners to that. Now, these are ten thousandths. If I have to get fractions of that, I am sacrificing uh, Feeler gauges. I have a bunch of feeler gauges. I bought two sets, one for this job and one for that. And what I'm doing with these is if I need 15 thousandths or 18 thousandths, I can put one of these in and then build up the rest with the uh, feeler gauges. And these are great for doing, when you, when you set the head here, they're also great for, for doing the angle, setting of the head so you get it all nice and, and flat. So let's do, let me get my notes, notes out and, oh yeah, to measure the thickness of everything I'm putting under the glass, I have a uh, machinist's uh, uh, vernier, di vernier gauge, dial indicator vernier gauge, that's in ten thousandths of an inch, it's a hundred thousandths per sweep. So let's get started, let's find the, let's find the high corner. Okay, that far corner there is the, is the, is the high corner. I'll go set, go over there and put the dial indicator on it and set that to zero. Okay, that corner from my box is the zero corner. So let's go all the way over here. Actually, it's uh, 23 thousandths. It's 43. Thousands. And this corner is eighteen thousandths. So zero, zero is there, twenty-three, forty, and eighteen. So let's go and I'll do the shimming now. Uh, again, this most of this will be time lapse because it's kind of boring. I got a lot of work to do here. 
I'll come back to this and we'll, we'll start filming again. Okay, well, that took a while, but I've pretty much got it indexed now, so it's, it, it's as flat as I can get. There's a slight in, in, imperfection, in, irregularities in the glass, even though it's a 3 16th piece of glass. Um, but now I have to remove that dial indicator and put in my angle, angle indicator. Get that out. Put this one in. Now, this is going to be a little difficult because, as you can see, it's facing this way, it's facing that way. When uh, So I have to get back and forth, back and forth. So it's going to be a little bit, a little bit of gymnastics going on here. So, there we go. Let's get... I'm going to do the nodding first, it says, as, as Mark Lindsay said in his video, do the nodding first and then do the side to side. So onward and upward. That little uh, time lapse you just saw is just a fraction of the time it took me to get this indexed and get the shims in place. I'm um, up to about an hour and a half, maybe two hours of work, but that gives you an idea of what I was dealing with. Um, I now have under five thousandths all the way around, difference six inches out from the center of the axis of the router. I'm good with that. Um, even Mark Lindsay in his video says, 5,000, I'm good with that. Because let's keep in mind, I'm woodworking. I'm not doing precision uh, CNC metal machining. Now, I'm not going to do the new spoil board for a while because this one's still very good. When I do my next spoil board, then I'll go ahead and, and do the uh, shaving it off because right now, we're just doing a lot of linear cuts, cutting out shapes, and doing some engraving, which really doesn't need very precise indexing. Whereas some of the fancier 3D stuff I plan to do kind of requires that. So I'm happy with where I am now. This is all ready to go finally after having it for, I won't tell you how long. So uh, until the next video, have a great time, have a beer, and make great things out of wood.